Hey everyone, this is Victor Kilo 3 Bravo Lima, and um, today, um, due to overwhelming demand, I'm going to do a two-tone test on the IC7610. Um, one of the initial reasons I didn't want to do one was I was worried about doing it accurately, uh, but I came up with a good methodology for making sure that um, the AF input didn't uh, distort the results in any significant way. And the trick to doing that was to generate the two tones, put them on the... Um, uh, the SD card and play them back as a voice memory just as I had done with my recorded message. So without further ado I'm going to start with um, 100 watts into a dummy load. It's a Bird 8201. Once again we're using a clean RF sampler and an SDR Play RSB2 to uh, do the testing. So you should have my desktop in front of you. Stand by and I'll start the two-tone test at 100 watts. Okay, that was about um, 30 dB down uh, on um, a single tone. So that's uh, negative 36 dB in the ARRL methodology, um, which is PEP. So let's go down to, we'll try 75 watts now, and we'll do it again. Here we go. Okay, IMD5, which is this one, uh, once again was about, was well, now it was 35 dB down um, on the, uh, the peak tone. So that's negative 41 in the ARRL method. And that was just by reducing the power from 100 to 75 watts. So you can see that just by backing off a little bit, um, there are some gains to be had there. Now I'm going to change the radio. I'm going to put it on 50%. Um, and 50% on my radio does read 50 watts on my PEP reading meter. So let's do it again. Here we go. Now the interesting thing with this one, and uh, excuse the tone in the background, the noise gate obviously isn't cutting that out, is IMD5 um, and IMD3 are both about level now. Um, you saw on the earlier test, IMD5 was the strongest tone, but now they're about equal. So let's do uh, a test here. Let's count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you might even argue eight and a little bit more. That's uh, 40 dB down on PEP. Um, that is a very good result. Um, sorry, 40 dB down on the peak tone or um, basically negative 46 dB down on PEP. Um, I'll stop that. An absolutely wonderful result at 50 watts. It's a real sweet spot for this radio. Um, but, you know, as we go down, we'll go down to 25 watts now. Things get even better. And um, let's have a look. Okay, now you can see that IMD3 is the dominant tone here. So we've got, let's just count full scale. Look, they're, they're about halfway on each. So we'll start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine now we kind of cheated there a little bit nine isn't right because i started i started on this one so it's actually eight so once again from 75 watts to 50 no no from 50 watts to 25 watts there's not a big difference because as imd5 has rolled off imd3 has increased i'll shut that up sorry um so basically anywhere between 25 watts and 50 watts is the sweet spot for this radio um, we'll go down even further and um, I'll go down to 10 watts now and we'll do it again. Now, this is quite an interesting pattern. You can see here that um, IMD3 is strong, IMD5 is pretty much dipped away, but some of the higher order harmonics are starting to pop up. So let's do another count. Um, it's not quite. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine times five, I'm actually quite bad at maths, um, that's 45, uh, or almost 45 dB down on PEP, so uh, on, on center tone, or um, uh, 51 down on um, PEP, which is the ARRL method once again. So um, that's really good. Uh, if you're going to use this um, at low power, running a low power amp, and you can keep it controlled, 
Now that's a, a very important thing is keeping it controlled. I don't know how disciplined it will be at, at low powers, but we can find that out in a bit. Um, I suspect not particularly. Uh, it is very, very hard to, to keep a 100 watt PA stage under control. Um, but, you know, one of the interesting things is 1% on the radio. And I'll do that now. Um, it's, you know, in theory equivalent to about 1 watt. I'll check on the meter and I'll let you know. Here we go. Okay, the meter's reading exactly 1 watt. And um, you can only just see IMD3 in my noise. You can see a little bit of higher order distortion. Um, couldn't tell you exactly. It'll be something like uh, ninth or 11th, um, maybe both. But if we count, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You can see how bad at maths I am. <laughs> That's why I never paid it, made it to an engineer and I, I just... Uh, um, I'm just a good technician, so 12 by 5, we'll, we'll um, I'm quieting that up. Um, I don't know, what is that? Uh, uh, 4 12s are 48, 12 5s are 60. So um, 60 dB down when you're only putting out 1 watt. So for those of you who want to use the transverter drive function, once it, um, and the transverter drive function is a, a completely separate case to... Uh, to driving an amplifier um, using the main output because the transverter drive function um, basically avoids the PA stage of the radio. For those of you using the transverter drive, this thing is going to put out a really, really clean signal. Now, unfortunately, 28 megahertz or even 50 um, megahertz, probably not the most ideal intermediate frequency for transverter drive, but who knows? There might be some really good accessories made for this radio and it is very clean. So just to top things off, I'll um I'll show you how the uh, the distortion products change as we sweep down from 100 to um uh, one watt. So we'll start the tone again, and here we go. So the interesting thing to watch here. Oh, sorry, I have to press power. The interesting thing to watch here is how the higher order products start falling, and the uh, lower order IMD3 product starts rising. And keep watching. As you can see, I'm um, just at about 40 watts now. And as we go lower and lower and lower, IMD3 becomes a dominant one, and eventually even it falls away, and the, uh, well that's zero, so one, eventually it falls away, and you can see the higher order products uh, are what's dominant. Now, this is on zero, um, you know, you've only got the higher order products there, and once again, that really clean signal, and if we do it in reverse, and you have to wait for my AGC to catch, well, it's not, not AGC as such, but my um, Fourier transformation averaging to catch up, but you can see how as you start putting out more and more power, the radio starts, um, you know, producing, um, well, well, the uh, distortion product uh, percentages change. Um, so, yeah, as I said, anything between 25 and we'll go back to 50. Well, let's go to, let's go to 30. That's probably quite a common drive power. This is 30. And as you can see, that's um, probably right in the sweet spot for this radio. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, almost eight divisions. So it's almost 40 dB down on um, your peak tone there. DBC uh, is the way that um, iMac or some of the other com um, companies would refer to that. Um, and yeah, you just add six if you want to convert it to AERRL numbers. And um, I'll have to, you'll have to excuse a bit of a hiss in my microphone here. I'm trying out a noise gate and I haven't got the settings quite right, but I did want to make this video. Anyway, I'll... Um, Oh no, I'll show you one more test, and um, this, this is the, uh, the white noise test. So it um, doesn't sound pretty, hopefully you don't hear too much of it, but um, this is white noise. It's more indicative of real-world performance, just like my other examples were. And there you can see, um, you can hear in the background unfortunately, you've got basically tones everywhere and the distortion products. And for interest's sake, we'll do a quick sweep. A slow sweep, I should say. That's 75. That's 50. That's 25. That's 10. And that's 0%. 
So 0%, you can see it's very, very, very clean. So there you go. There's some, um, I guess some people would argue, more engineering grade tests. And uh, I'm completely happy because I did them using pre-generated audio files, played through the SD card um, using the voice keyer. Why is that important? Because the radio's internal um, digital to analog converter, which uh, should be should be done at an RF stage, um, being a, quite a modern radio, rather than an AF stage, um, is is basically making sure is is taking care of uh, the decoding of that wave file. That's better than say using the USB interface of the radio because then you've got to worry about the cleanliness of the the USB stage and any subsequent DACs you might have there. Um, so that's my preferred method. That's what I used for the initial test for repeatability, and that's what I used here for the IND testing. I will make my audio files available. Um, the tones are, uh, I believe from memory, 700 and 1900, but I have written that down. And um, yeah, anyone will be free to do the test on their radio and make sure it conforms. Now, I will say one last thing, and we'll do a quick test to show. Um, once again, this is into a dummy load. So I'll put the power on 25, and I'll turn my amplifier on. And let's see what happens. What have we got here? So the amplifier is putting out, according to this, uh, let's get that right. Uh, amplifier is putting out 500 watts into the dummy load. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So negative 35 dB down, um, but you do still have quite a few, you know, it, it pulls up all the other, other products and generates some of its own. Now, if we go up to 50, Okay, what have we got now? Ah, uh, you can see IMD5 really comes up. The amplifier is actually putting out 1200 watts now into the dummy load. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I won't go any further than that. It's a THP um, 2.5K effect. It could go higher, but the point I'm trying to make, and I'm varying it slowly now, is that you want to, if, you, if you're concerned about transmission cleanliness, you want to find the sweet spot that's within your power regulations. Now, if I adjust for my sweet spot, my power regulations, my maximum pep power, um, and it's a little bit low there, go back up. Okay, almost. That's 400 watts on the nose, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So. With my setup, when I'm transmitting, I'm going to be um, negative 35 dBc. Um, that's quite a good figure, really, for a solid-state setup. Um, or negative 41 in the ARRL method. So pretty happy with that for a solid-state setup. I don't love the fact that there's, um, as you can see, you know, products going all up and down. But as I'm using a, um, a, a roller inductor tuner, some of those... Some of the bottom ones, at least, will get eliminated to some degree. Um, uh, it is a T network, so it's a high pass, meaning it will pass this stuff. It's not going to pass this stuff here. Um, but there, there you have it. That's the ICOM IC7610 and an overview of its IMD products and how it behaves driving an amplifier. This is VK3 Bravo Lima. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, if you want to know more, send me an email. And as I said, I'll make those, uh, those um, pre-made recordings available for your use. VK3BL saying 73. Thanks for watching.